This is the Free Church Podcast. We're so glad you're taking time to listen. We want to see people live in freedom and with purpose. So please contact us if there's any way we can help you. So I'm always, always nervous when I preach. Today I think I'm extra nervous because the sound is horrible, but also because I know that today I am preaching more to myself than probably anyone else in the room. So my topic for this morning is take, to go from overwhelmed to overflowing. Um, and if you're anything like me, this time of year can be a lot. Um, I'm an introvert by nature, and so all these Christmas parties and events and end of year functions and uh, kids concerts and all these things that you have to be extroverted for, they kind of tap my social battery and make me feel overwhelmed. And last week, Gareth started this Christmas series, uh, preached about how we must keep healthy rhythms and taught us all about where different Christmas traditions come from. And we got home to overwhelm. We got, <laughs> there's Gareth sharing on healthy rhythms and healthy li- lifestyle, and our house looked like the Christmas Grinch had thrown up. <laughs> there was tinsel everywhere, there was uh, stationery packs that had started being unpacked, there was uh, birthday presents and Christmas, not birthday presents, Christmas presents and Christmas paper, and the kids just wanted to go big on decorating our house. And it was a lot. A lot, a lot. We were tired, and we started to feel incredibly overwhelmed by the amount of stuff going on and the energy. I don't know if your kids are like my kids, but my kids have got so much energy, and so they had all this energy, and I just wanted to actually take a nap. So, hence why we are discussing how to go from overwhelmed to overflowing, and I wish the people in the front row would behave themselves. I'm just saying, like, can you guys please behave yourselves. Thank you, Timber. So, um, I don't know if you've ever met somebody that when you walk into their, into their house or into a space where they are at, you just think, this person is awesome. They are like smiling and only good vibes and they just make you feel so good and they've got just this like wonderful nature. They're so special and so I don't know, just awesome. Have you, do anybody know somebody like that? Yeah. You just want to hang out with them. You're like, I just want to be with this person because they're awesome. Or maybe you have walked into somebody's home or encountered somebody that is the opposite. They have like a storm cloud above their head and it's raining always. And it's like this vortex of doom that sucks your energy, and you're like, I feel really sad and drained right now. So um, maybe you've asked yourself, which one are you? First one. Oh, the first one. My husband says he's the first one. <laughs> he is actually. He's not even lying. <laughs> um, so maybe sometimes we need to stop and pause and take a look at ourselves and go, where are we? What does our emotional regulation look like? Are we that person that brings energy and joy into the room, or are we that person that sucks the life out of everybody in the room? So me personally, this week, I've been a little bit of the latter. Um, Like I said, this time of year, energy is like low. But I really, really want to be a hope-slinging, joy-bringing, peace sharing kind of person. That's who I want to be. Okay, so this week I wasn't there, but there's grace for that, and that's who I want to be, and I want us to be people like that, because I think that we have the secret ingredient to be those people, and I'm not talking about um, conjuring up fake joy and fake excitement because we've got to be sunbeams for Jesus. If you grew up in the 80s, you probably know about that. That's... (laughs) I walked into Pick and Pay, and there's a snowman in Pick and Pay, and he's really cute, but it's 35 degrees in Pretoria, and that hope has got no hope for us. We've got no hope of snowmen at Christmas, and I thought, this is fake hope. 
a snowman in Pretoria in December. That is fake hope, and he's really cute. But I'm talking about the real hope that is found only in Jesus. So to kick us off, Proverbs 17, verse 22 says, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. And I've been in that place where my bones literally are dried up, when there's far more crying than there is laughing, where there's brokenness and pain. And if you're in that place, there's no shame. I'm not throwing any shade. Please go and find help. Go and see a professional who can help you. There, is, there are people that can help in that situation. But we can also be people that have a joyful heart because it's good medicine. And we can choose to lean into the pain sometimes in, in certain seasons, that's necessary, to come out on the other side of healing. And we can choose then to find joy. We had our life group end of year dinner this week, and I wasn't really in the mood, to be honest. And um, Dom said to me the next day, she said, I saw you make the switch. I watched you make the switch. And I wasn't in the mood, I was tired, but I made the switch and I decided to choose joy because these are my people, this is my tribe, and this, my kids are here, and we, it was chaos, absolute noise and drama and tinsel and all that. But I chose joy, and I'm so glad that I did. And I think that we as Christians can choose to lean in to joy in this season. Real joy. So I've got just four things to share with you of how I believe that we can go from overwhelmed to overflowing and choosing joy. The first one is simply to believe. We get to believe that Jesus is who he said he is. We get to just believe that, not feel that, not, our emotions can't lead us in that. We, our brain, our mind, our, our soul has to choose to believe. In the hard seasons, in the good seasons, in the joy, in the pain, we believe that Jesus is who he says he is. And Romans 15 verse 13 says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We, we just get to believe. We don't have to do, we don't have to work, we don't have to whatever. We just have to believe that Jesus is who he says he is. And then the God of hope will fill you with all joy, not a little sprinkling of joy like fake snow joy, all joy, I don't even know what all joy means, but all joy and peace as you believe so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So our choice is to believe and then we receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So all we have to do is believe. We don't have to raise up the power within ourselves. We believe and then we get joy and hope and peace as a byproduct of simply believing. Sometimes I think that it's easy to believe that God is who he says he is when we come to church. When you sit here, it's easy to believe that God is who he says he is. And maybe it's easy to believe that God is who he says he is when you go to life group, because everybody around you believes that God is who he says he is. But do you choose on the daily to believe that God is who he says he is when you're at work? Do you choose daily to believe God is who he says he is when your marriage is hard? Do you choose daily to believe God is who he says he is when life sucks? Sometimes it does. But we get to be people that believe daily that God is who he says he is. And I've had this picture of this waterfall of God's grace. When we believe that our cups are empty, it's the end of the year, we're just clinging on till when maybe some of us are lucky enough to go on holiday, but I've got this picture of this waterfall of God's grace, that if we choose to believe him daily, even in the hard places, he's going to pour down that joy, that hope, that peace, until we reach that point 
of overflowing? Do you choose to believe God is who he says he is on a daily basis? The second thing is to behold. So we get to believe that God is who he says he is. And then we get to behold. Now behold, I like words. I don't know if I've told you that before, but I like words. Behold is to take hold of something and to look at something, to gaze upon it, to be awestruck by it. Not just a passing glance, but to behold something is to take deep notice of that thing. To, to really Turn your heart and your eyes towards that thing. So John 1, 14, in the New King James Version, which I never read, by the way, but it says it best here. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When we believe Jesus is who he says he is, and he's done what he says he's done, then we get to continue to turn our hearts to behold him, to actually fix our eyes on his glory. There's an author and speaker, Anne Foskamp, that's not how you pronounce her name in Canada, but I don't know how to pronounce it otherwise. Um, She's Canadian, um, so I say Foskamp, it's probably not pronounced like that. She says that she takes a daily glory soak. And I love that. A daily glory soak. To behold the glory of Jesus. To actually take time to continue to turn our eyes, to turn our hearts towards this Jesus, the King of heaven, that made a way for us to enter into heaven, to ma- that made a way for us to live free, that made a way for us to be all that he designed us to be. Do we take time every single day to behold his glory, to look him in the eyes? Because when we do that, we will always be changed. You cannot behold the glory of God and stay the same. It's, I don't think it's possible. Behold the glory of God. Stop and look with an expectation to see his glory. So that same Scripture in the message version, I just love, it just doesn't use the word behold, but when, when talking about actually turning our hearts towards looking at his glory, this made so much sense to me. It says, the, war, the word, which is Jesus, became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes. Humanity saw the glory of heaven come in human flesh, move into the neighborhood with their own eyes, with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Will we be people that behold that truth, the truth that Jesus himself put on human flesh and moved into the neighborhood so that we can get to know him? If you want to know Jesus, you just have to open the pages of Scripture and you will know Him. You get to turn your heart towards Him and behold His glory because the truth of who He is is only found in the pages of Scripture. That is the historical event of His life written down for you and I to know the truth and to be set free by that truth. Would you behold the glory of God on a daily basis? So we believe and we behold, and another B is we'll be found. Will you be found in the presence of the living God? Would you be found in his presence? Psalm 16 verse 11 says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. Again, I don't know what fullness of joy looks like, but it's certainly not a a, a snowman. The fullness of joy is only found in the presence of God. And we've experienced it a little bit today. We get to taste that, that joy that we, as we worship him, we get to experience a little bit of that joy rising. That's why I asked you to park your concerns and your issues and whatever's consuming you. Park it, leave it at the door and come and experience the joy of the Lord. Fifi spoke about the joy of the Lord being our strength. We get to be filled up with that fullness of joy when we are found in his presence. We get to anchor ourselves in the presence of God. The world is very loud, 
My children are very loud. Christmas decorations are very loud. It can be very overwhelming. And God speaks in a still small voice. Would you be found? Would you take yourself out of the noise on a daily basis to be found in the quiet presence of God? Because that will restore your life. Be found in the presence of God on a daily basis and he will give you joy. Now, I want to just mention to the young people over here, the, and over here, if, you, you know, if, it, if the shoe fits, wear it. But when I was looking at this, I thought, hey, there's that expression that says, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. And I try to find who said it originally, I don't know. So if you were the original person that said it, I will um, give you credit later. But show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Young people, Hang out with the right crowd. Be found in the presence of God first and foremost, and then be found in people that point you towards Him. Do not be found in the presence of people that point you towards vaping and sex and drugs and alcohol. You will not find joy there. It's fake joy. That's a fake snowman. Be found in the presence of God. I'm serious. I'm serious. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. Be found in the presence of God. Surround yourself with people that point you towards Jesus, that call you out of the pit of despair and point you to the hope that is only found in Him. Be filled, be found with the, in the presence of God. Come away with Him daily. He wants to tell you things. He wants to reveal to you the secrets of his heart. Yesterday in my quiet time, I wasn't planning on saying this, but in my quiet time, God spoke to me about being a big-hearted person. And if you were in heart and soul this morning, which is a time where we gather as the volunteers to pray and just be encouraged, Temba spoke about being a big-hearted person. And Temba didn't know that God spoke to me about that. And that encouraged my heart so much be found so that in God's presence so that he can whisper things to your soul and you can be encouraged and breathe, it'll breathe life in you. My fourth point is be filled. Be filled. So we're gonna believe, we're gonna behold, we're gonna be found in his presence and then we're gonna be filled by the Holy Spirit. As we do these things, as we lean into all who God is, as we choose to find God above the noise, and as we choose to really see him, to turn our hearts to seeing him, we find ourselves in his presence. He will fill us. That is a promise. He will fill us. And that filling is not some fake joy that you'll find in the bottom of your Christmas stocking, sorry, as a project. As a, that will bring joy. But <laughs> this is a, 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 a better joy, a full joy. Allow him to fill you because the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians says, and it's one fruit, it's not many fruits, it's one thing. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. So I don't know about you, but I don't wanna be that vortex of doom. I rather wanna be full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of patience, full of kindness, full of goodness, full of faithfulness, full of gentleness, and full of self-control. I wanna stand in God's presence and be filled with His Spirit that empowers me to be a joyful, hopeful, peaceful, kind person and not get stuck in the stupidity of all the world promises that is fake and nothing that we can anchor our soul to. I wanna be found in His presence and be filled with His Spirit that will empower me to live different to what the world wants us to live in this season. And we have full access. There is no reason why we can't do this. We just have to make the choice. We have to make the choice to be with Jesus to look at him and see who he is and to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. 
So I ask you again, which one do you want to be? Do you want to be the hope-slinging, joy-bringing, peacemaking kind of person? Or would you rather be the vortex of doom? Nobody's here. <laughs> Anybody with me? I know who I want to be. And I'd love to pray for you. If you're feeling a little bit despondent, if this season has made you, left you in a place of overwhelm and not in the place of overflowing, I would love to pray for you because this Jesus, he is more than able to make a way for you to see joy, to see peace, to experience it, to live it and to share it with the world. The world is very dark and needs us as Christ followers to be the light to show people what true hope is this Christmas season. Won't you stand? So maybe you're feeling despondent and, and the words have bounced, but you haven't quite taken root. I'd love to pray for us that we would be these people. I'd love to pray for the Holy Spirit to come and fill us, to enlarge our hearts, to lift our eyes to see that there is hope. And the hope has a name, and that hope is Jesus. So I don't know how you want to respond. If you want to come forward in response, if you want to lift your hands in response, if you want to kneel, if whatever makes you comfortable, but choose to respond to this Jesus this morning. Holy Spirit, I thank you that your tangible presence is with us today. I thank you that you are ready, you stand ready to pour out your Spirit upon us. I thank you, Jesus, that you are so good, that you are who you say that you are, and that as we shift our eyes, as we turn our hearts towards you, that we will find you, that we will see your glory, that we will experience your joy, and that we will be filled on a daily basis by your Spirit. I pray now, Holy Spirit, would you pour out in power across your people? Would you fill us with your joy? Would you fill us with your hope? Would you fill us with your peace? Because we know that you're able and you're willing and you're ready. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. Our prayer is that God will continue to speak to you and his power would be at work in your life.